Welcome back to episode number 12 of Dominique Pernay's course on celestial navigation. My name is John Pinto, and I'm a mathematician and amateur astronomer, and I'll be presenting Dominique's course on celestial navigation. You can find more information about Dominique's books at marinenavigationbooks.com, along with the exercise manual, and you can find out there how to order the books, download resources, including the slide deck that this course is based on. So this episode, we're going to dive into using time to measure longitude. Uh, and we're going to get some exercise practice in here and uh, get you to use your thinking cap a little bit. So again, just to review, longitude is determined by time. That is the time for the sun to travel from Greenwich Meridian around 12 o'clock UTC to the boat's meridian uh, at its midday when the sun is directly due south, highest in the sky. And then <clears throat> measure the difference in that time by 15 degrees per hour to determine your longitude. I should mention that latitude was never really a problem because you could easily tell your latitude either from the height of Polaris over your horizon, uh, or if you were south of the equator, by the height of the sun at, at noon, at midday. Uh, both of those were pretty commonly used to determine latitude, but it was longitude that was the real problem. And we will go over those techniques uh, later in the course. Anyway, back to longitude. So, for example, we know the sun crosses the Greenwich Meridian on a particular day at 12.05 UTC. We measure when the sun crosses the boat meridian. That's when it gets to its highest point in the sky. Uh, south of you if you're in the northern hemisphere, north of you if you're in the southern hemisphere. And you see that the uh, sun crosses your meridian at 2017 UTC. Again, you've adjusted your chronometer, so you know the exact UTC time, uh, adjusting for a chronometer error. And you subtract those two times, and you get eight hours and 12 minutes, or eight hours and one fifth and plus one fifth of an hour. You do your calculation of eight and one fifth times 15, gives you 120 degrees plus three degrees. So you are at about 123 degrees in longitude, which is about the longitude of Vancouver, surprisingly. Now, the official day, right, what we measure on a chronometer is constant, right? It takes exactly 24 hours uh, for the, what they call the mean sun, or the average sun, to go from uh, meridian to meridian, right? It goes 360 degrees around the around the Earth. However, the real sun is not so constant, um, so we need to deal with that. Um, it's not a real big deal, but it is something that uh, you need to be aware of, that the sun does not always cross the Greenwich Meridian at exactly noon. So you need your almanac to look that up. So as I said, the real sun crosses Greenwich on average at 12 o'clock UTC, but it will cross Greenwich meridian a little earlier or a little, or a little later. So in your almanac, if you, you know, look at a particular day, it actually tells you when the sun crossed the Greenwich meridian on that day. And that's the time you would compare to your meridian crossing time uh, to get your longitude. So uh, that was one example where it crossed after 12 o'clock. Here in October, it crosses, it crosses the meridian before 12 o'clock. So again, important to keep track of this uh, when you're using meridian passage to uh, determine your, your longitude. This difference in time between 12 o'clock noon and the actual time the sun, the real sun actually crosses your meridian is called the equation of time. And in 2003, this is how it varied. And pretty much it varies like this even today. Uh, this recording is done in 2022, and this graph is pretty much the same uh, even today. 
uh, but the almanac will tell you the exact time on the particular day. So there's a couple of different times that we are talking about here. So of course we've been talking about UTC time, which is the time at the meridian of Greenwich, the mean time at the meridian of Greenwich. But then we have the zone time, right? So what zone you happen to be sailing in. Um, and that time is the time along the mid zone meridian. So for example, in British Columbia, that's 120 degrees west. And each zone is about is exactly 15 degrees apart from each other. Meridian time, or mean local mean time, really kind of the same thing, uh, is, the t is the time along the boat meridian. So not necessarily the meridian in the middle of the zone, sorry about that, but the time exactly where you are located. So from uh, Greenwich to the BC meridian is 120 degrees, which is exactly eight hours. But if you wanted to keep time based on the meridian you're located on, your local mean time or your local meridian time, you'd have to take into account how far away you are from Greenwich. You're not going to be exactly 120 degrees. So you're 123 degrees in eight minutes, let's say. <clears throat> that needs to be converted into a certain amount of time uh, if you want to set a clock to your local meridian time and not necessarily your zone time. So these concepts we're going to run into time and time again uh, throughout the course. So just starting to get you introduced to these various different uh, times that you'll be dealing with. So the conversion of arc to time is given to you in a table in the almanac. And it gives you uh, that arc to time for every quarter of a minute of angle from zero degrees to 360 degrees, which is basically one second of time is one quarter of a minute of arc angle. So here's that table. And let's look at an example. So <clears throat> Say for the sun to rotate around the earth for 123 degrees and 8.25 minutes of angle. You would go into the table. First, you'd get your full number of degrees, your whole degrees, 123 degrees. So there's your eight hours and 12 minutes. Then you need to go and find out how much more time it takes for the sun to go 8.25 minutes. So in this right-hand section of the table, you find eight minutes and 2.25 minutes, 8.25, and you get 33 more seconds of time. So you add eight minutes, 12, uh, eight hours and 12 minutes to 33 seconds, and you get a full difference of eight hours, 12 minutes and 33 seconds to get the local mean time at 123 degrees, 8.25 minutes of angle difference from UTC over at Greenwich. And here's some examples of exercises for you to try uh, from the exercise book, uh, where you'll take different boat longitudes and you'll uh, convert them into total difference hours between Greenwich time and your boat meridian time. To go the other way, if you want to know the conversion of time to arc, uh, there's a section in the almanac at the back, uh, 60 pages long. Well, I shouldn't say 60 pages, 60 columns. Uh, it's actually two columns per page, so it's really 30 pages. Um, and it gives you how to do that calculation second by second. So let's take an example. Uh, you want to know how far the sun, moon, planets, Aries, or the moon moves in 57 minutes and 15 seconds. So you would find the uh, column for 57 minutes, go down to how many seconds, and you would read across how many degrees and minutes of arc that that particular celestial body has moved uh, in that time. Now, the reason this only needs to be the minutes and seconds is because the hours are simple. 
you just take the number of hours and you multiply them by 15 degrees, and uh, that's your base. And to that base, you add the number of minutes and seconds using this conversion table at the back of the almanac. Pretty straightforward, just doing some simple multiplication and some sums. So let's take uh, another example. We want to convert 14 minutes and zero seconds. And you look it up in your uh, in your nautical almanac. 14 minutes, zero seconds. The sun moves three and a half degrees, basically. Let's take another example. Just want to know how far the sun moves in seven minutes and eight seconds. We go to the seven minute column in the back of our almanac. Scroll down to the eight second row, and we see that the sun has moved one degree and 47 minutes. And here we go with some more exercises for you to try, uh, where you're going to take the time of the sun's crossing of the boat meridian, what time it was at Greenwich when it crossed its meridian, and you'll use this to calculate your difference in longitude. Again, Get the exercise book, uh, go on marinenavigationbooks.com, it'll show you how to order it or download it, uh, and you can uh, run these exercises, and uh, the exercise book also has the answers to check yourself. Uh, here's another exercise where we want to predict when do we expect the sun to cross our boat meridian. So again, some more exercises to uh, make sure that you're really wrapped your head around the concepts and how to manipulate uh, the um, arc to time and time to arc. One final exercise, and this is, uh, uh, if you get this exercise down, you, uh, you really understand this concept really well. Uh, one thing I will suggest is that you do get yourself some kind of a map or almanac or atlas uh, of Vancouver Island because that's going to be uh, important to be able to um, answer question number six. I know it took me a while to find an almanac with good enough data to figure this one out, and hopefully you'll be able to figure it out as well. But again, it's one of those ideas where you're going to really be using your conversions and uh, do a little bit of a practical example uh, to determine where Captain Vancouver was uh, when he uh, took his sight of the, of the uh, sun crossing the meridian at a particular location on Vancouver Island. Hopefully you'll be able to figure that out. Our next episode, we're gonna dive back into the almanac and um, get some more practice looking up sun coordinates uh, because Doing uh, longitude based on meridian crossing of the sun, that's wonderful if you can do it. It's not the most accurate. It, you know, it's, it'll give you a good approximation. Um, but uh, to get true accuracy, we're going to have to dive into a whole other technique. Uh, and you're going to need to be real familiar with pulling out coordinates out of the almanac. So in our next episode, uh, we'll get back into that and... Uh, and hopefully you are continuing to enjoy our, our course. Episode 13 coming up.